Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. Today I'm gonna talk about a single artificial neuron. Yes, a single artificial neuron. Now generally we talk about artificial neural networks, deep neural networks and CNNs. But today I am only gonna focus on a single artificial neuron and I want you to understand what a single artificial neuron is and how to conceptualize it from a mathematical perspective. Now, uh, in many places at online, you can see that they are comparing these artificial neurons with the biological neurons, but I don't really think that this is the correct way to do it because it is a mathematical thing and like every other machine learning model, it boils down to simple mathematical equations. So I like to think them from a mathematical perspective only not from a biological one so let's get started now uh, a single artificial neuron can be uh, treated as just a function yes it is nothing more but a function so if i can just draw a single artificial neuron then i will be drawing it something like this this is a cell this is a neuron you can call it anything but remember that this is just a mathematical function and what a function does well it takes bunch of inputs these are the inputs and it spits out one output okay now before diving into the details of uh, of an artificial neuron i would like to tell you about what came before this neuron because mathematicians and computer scientists just didn't came up with the artificial neurons overnight they researched it for a long time and after that they came up with an artificial neuron so before the artificial neuron we had a very similar thing but they were called perceptrons i am pretty sure that you have heard of this term before but in many cases they just treat a perceptron as an artificial neuron well it is not totally false but there is one slight change that i have to mention here uh, suppose this is our perceptron again it's just a mathematical function that i'm representing with the circle and it also takes uh, some inputs now let's name these inputs x0 x1 x2 and x3 and it outputs one y okay this is the output now uh, this perceptron is actually a combination of two functions so to uh, make it clear I'm just gonna break it here and in the first part they call it linear part the names will be cleared just in a moment and this is uh, just a threshold function or I will call it a step function So what is being done in this linear portion? Well, uh, it is just this. Let me just uh, change the color. In the linear part, we just multiply this whole x thing. Okay, just let me just write this whole x input as this. So x is a vector which contains all these things. Okay, so in the linear part, what we do is w is a matrix and x is our vector and we add a bias now let me just show the bias also here so this is our bias so this is our linear portion you can see that it is linear because it only contains functions from linear algebra there is nothing more than that just a simple matrix multiplication and then followed by a b just a bias term so this was the linear portion and in the step function what we have here let me just draw the function here suppose this is one axis and let me call it z because i have already used x here so i am not gonna label this x axis at x i am labeling in labeling it at z okay so uh this is just the f of z and let me call this point at something called c okay so uh, what this step function does it takes a z and if it is less than c 
then it produces zero output and if it is more than or equal to c then it is producing a one output so let me just name it this is one and this is zero so if i just can write this function the step function i should write it as f of z is equal to uh, let me just write it zero if z less than c and it is one if z greater than equal to c so this was all about perceptron so if you can uh, think a bit more clearly you can probably see that this is just a binary classifier and this is exactly what it is so uh, in a perceptron what we have is we have taking the inputs we are first passing this input to this function this linear function which will give me a z and we then pass this z to our step function and we produce y so if i just draw the computation graph that will be easier for you to understand so let me just draw the computation graph very fast so i am giving it x it is producing w x plus b then we are treating this as z and then we are calculating f of z which is our y and this is actually 0 or 1 so this was perceptron so what it does is ju it just acts as a binary classifier now the question is why it is not actually helpful in every case well uh, if we just use this perceptron then we can just solve the problems which are linearly separable because you can probably notice that there is no non-linear part involved in this thing this part is absolutely linear that as i told earlier and this part is also linear because you can see that there is no curve there is just a step there is nothing in between that so uh, if we just use this perceptron we end up with a problem they call it as the czar problem we cannot solve czar problem and the let me just introduce the czar problem for real quick suppose we have two variables a and variable b and the czar operation says if two variables are same then one and if two variables are different then zero so if one if a is one and b is zero then i should get a one and if a is 0 and B is 0 then I should get a 0 so let me just mark the points here suppose this point is uh, a 0 B 0 this point is B 1 a 0 this point is both 1 and this point a 1 B 0 and this point where both are 0 and this point both are 1 I should get and output zero so i am labeling these two as same color and these two as different colors and if i want just want to separate them then i cannot simply classify them using a perceptron because it is non-linearly separable we can't just draw a line so that that line can separate these two so a uh, perceptron won't work here and to solve this our problem we have to introduce some kind of non-linearity in this structure and that's where they come up with this neural network or uh, i should say the single neuron the concept of neuron well in the neuron the concept is actually exactly same as perceptron with just a non-linearity introduced so let me just draw it again here so this is a neuron so just let me uh, name it as perceptron and name it as neuron so what will be the difference we ha just have to add a non-linearity and the non-linearity that i'm gonna add here that actually the scientist add there is in this portion we are going to use a non linear 
function and you get yeah you guessed it right in this portion we have the same linear function so let me just name the inputs again x0 x1 x2 x3 and how can we forget our bias this is the vector of x which is our input and we are going to have our output here so let me just write this function again this will be x wx plus b but in this nonlinear function we have now actually we have plenty of options i'm just gonna name the functions and the most common functions sigmoid relu and tan h let me just draw one of them you can actually research about it and it's very interesting topic actually the choice of activation function as they say the nonlinearity function so uh, if i just want to draw a graph of the sigmoid function i would be drawing it as again i am using z variable here just for the sake of simplicity because i don't want to use x so this is our zero and say this is our one and the function looks something like this and you guessed it correct that there is the 0 0.5 okay so what it basically does is uh, it takes a uh, input z and it computes this function the sigmoid function and uh, we write it as sigma bracket z okay so you can see that this is a nonlinear function and it is not a step function we are not just cutting it at this place as we did here and uh, because of this nonlinearity we can actually solve the zor problem with our with our neuron the artificial neuron because it can learn nonlinear functions because it can produce nonlinear boundaries but here for the perceptron thing we couldn't have done it so uh, another thing i want to mention is that you can see that this function is actually smooth and this function is differentiable so can you guess why the differentiability will help us well it will help us in the back propagation and just because this function is differentiable we can actually do the back prop algorithm that's how our neuron network actually learns if you see the algorithm for the perceptron learning algorithm you won't see any differentiation there because you can't just differentiate it here it is it the perceptron simply can't learn just by the back prop algorithm and i want to mention that how important the back prop algorithm is because without the back prop algorithm we couldn't have any of the advancements in ai and ml i guess you can notice how important the invention of an artificial neuron so what they just did they just replaced the step function with this nonlinear function and this changed the game it literally did change the game so uh, i hope that this video gave you enough information about the artificial neurons and perceptrons and how we evolved from perceptrons to artificial neurons and how all this crazy deep learning stuffs were made possible for this neuron thank you neuron so if you like this video please share this video please subscribe my channel and thanks for watching